Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. For planning for the location for the placement of the two implants on the patient's left side, in preparation for that, we can either take a diagnostic cast and do a diagnostic setup, that is to set replacement teeth, in this case I've used denture teeth, in the position where the proposed implants will be placed, and that would mimic the location where the final restorations would be for our patient. Another method is to look at the teeth on the opposite side of the arch and measure the distance from the center of our last tooth to the center of the patient's tooth and transfer that measurement to the side of the arch we'll be working on. Then also, we can go to the patient and measure the distance from the center of the two teeth on the opposite side and transfer that from the center of our first implant to the center of our second implant. And in the case where we're working on the patient's left side, we have the proposed location for the two implants on the patient's left side. Now the next thing I will do is having determined the location for the two implants, I want to take a round burr and make a small depression so I'm just coming in with a slow speed handpiece and an acrylic burr. And I make a small depression in the exact location where we propose placing the two implants. The next thing we need to do is to determine the orientation or the angulation that the implants will be placed. And by placing the cast in the dental surveyor table and securing it, we will then place our cast on a dental surveyor and determine the orientation for our implants. So here we have our dental surveyor table and by loosening the knurled nut at the front of it, this can be oriented in many different ways. And so we basically estimate an orientation, tighten the surveyor table, and then bring in our dental surveyor. What I've done as far as placing an analyzing rod or an instrument in my dental surveyor, I have simply taken the 2.8 millimeter diameter drill that we have in the drill kit. I've turned it upside down and it will place very nicely right up in the surveyor where we would normally place surveying tools. The reason again that I like this 2.8 millimeter drill turned upside down, it gives me or a longer orientation to sight to look at my lines for my orientation of the implant placement. So what I'm going to do is to line this up mesiodistally and then also in the buccal lingual orientation when I look at the distal proximal of the tooth adjacent to where our implants will be placed, I see that I'm lined up on the center of the proximal. And I see that I don't have any large soft tissue undercuts that would cause a potential dihiscence of my implant as it went further down in. We're lined up nicely so that we seem to be paralleling the root of the tooth on the anterior aspect of our edentulous space and will now block this cast out. What I will now do is just take my mechanical pencil and mark on the sides of the cast where the little holding clips held this cast. So when I take the cast off and on the surveyor table, it goes back on the surveyor table in exactly the same orientation. My next task will be to block this cast out with pink base plate wax. I'm going to remove my cast from the surveyor table and bring in my Bunsen burner, some pink base plate wax, a number seven wax spatula, and a large Peter K. Thomas instrument to perform the block out for this cast. So I'll now light the Bunsen burner and begin the block out process. With our number seven wax spatula, 
and the pink base plate wax, I simply heat the spatula. And one of the first things I want to do, as we did before, is flow wax onto the occlusal aspects of the teeth so that I fill in the depth of the occlusal anatomy on the posterior teeth. I'm going to do the same thing now on the bicuspids that are adjacent to the area where we'll be placing our implants. So I have the, uh, the depth of the occlusal surfaces filled in. I now proceed to the lingual aspect of the anterior teeth as well as the lingual aspect of the posterior teeth. So I get my wax spatula very hot, flowing a nice thin skin of pink base plate wax across the lingual surfaces of the anterior teeth. Now when I come to the lingual surfaces of my posterior teeth, I want to flow the wax so that it fills in the depth of the indentation between the teeth. Now I'm going to go across the arch to the opposite side and do the same thing on the lingual surfaces of the teeth on the other side. Here again I want the wax to flow in the depth of the crevices between the teeth. If I don't put enough block out on the teeth, I may damage my cast. Now when it comes to the proximal surfaces, I find the best instrument for placing wax across that area is the large Peter K. Thomas instrument. So again on these proximal surfaces, I want to block the proximal surface out not just so that it's parallel with the proposed path of insertion or the path of placement for the implants. I want it to be blocked slightly beyond parallel so it slopes out slightly. I want to be sure that I don't lock on my surgical guide or my x-ray guide as I'm making those. And now it's the same thing on the proximals in this single tooth missing space on the other side. Another area that bears attention is right along the incisal edges of these anterior teeth because many times where the corners of the teeth come together at their incisal edges, it may cause the cast to break. And the last thing I'll be doing is taking my number seven wax spatula and flowing a very thin amount of wax at the labial and buckle of the teeth. And so we've got our block out pretty well complete. So what we'll do next is proceed to adapt our triad material for the fabrication of our x-ray guide. At this point in time, what I could do is replace the cast in the surveyor table, lining up those little lines that I had on the back of the cast to make sure the cast is oriented the same way in my table. But what I now do is basically remove the 2.8 millimeter drill and I place instead the 2.0 millimeter drill blank. The drill blank can then be oriented exactly right over that small depression that I placed in the cast earlier. What I'm going to do now is simply bring in a sheet of triad material, place some lubrication on the cast. As I have done before, what I'll usually do with the triad material is just fold it and then literally roll it in my hands, making an oblong rope I then go ahead and just place it on the occlusal surfaces and then orient it so that it comes far enough back to go past this area where I want to place both of my implants. And then what I'm doing here is just taking my finger and pressing the triad down on the occlusal and incisal surfaces of my model. I'm not trying to wrap it over the buckle or incisals. And now at this time what I do, bring my surveyor in, brace the triad at the lingual side, and now press my little surveyor rod into that area. Now what I'm going to do right now, I just want to get an idea where the two two millimeter drill blanks need to go. Another thing that's useful for this is to take the 4.2 millimeter drill 
Again, brace this from the lingual and just push this 4.2 millimeter drill in until I can see that we have exposed where we want to place our implants. So this is a little taller than it needs to be right now, but that's okay. You'll see how to correct that. What I'm going to do right now is place this in the curing oven for three minutes. We've now removed our cured triad from the curing oven. And as you can see, the area of the triad here is quite a bit taller than we need it to be. We'll next go to the dental lathe where I will reshape this x-ray guide. You can see for the lathe and turn the arbor band on high speed. And you can see that this instrument does a very nice job of trimming our triad back. I just round the sides a little bit and now we're done using the arbor band to trim this with. The next thing I want to do is take a medium acrylic burr and just freshen or clean out these areas where the drill blanks will be going. Now I've basically lowered the height of it and I've cleaned out those two areas. So this again fits back on our cast. We can see that we have the depressions or the little dimples that we made as far as the location of our implants want to be. And so now what we want to do is to use our surveyor table, set up the way we had oriented it to give us the orientation. And if I go to the other location for the next implant, and so now what we're going to do is take some triad gel, and I'm just going to place this gel in this area lower this straight down so I know it's right in my depression. That's why I don't want to change my table at all. And now I'm just going to come in with a conventional handheld light curing wand. 20 seconds from the buckle and 20 seconds from the lingual. And we can move our drill blank to the next site and do the adjacent implant location as well. Having now cured this in place, I just loosen the knurled nut on the surveyor, lifting this straight up in the air. And what we then can do is just take a pair of pliers and remove this drill blank, put it back in the surveyor, and then bring it right back down to do the same thing to the next adjacent spot. Now that we have cured with triad gel the drill blank into our x-ray guide, we just grasp it with a pair of pliers and then after we've twisted it then we can lift it straight out. So what we want to do now is place our x-ray guide on our model, place the model into the surveyor table, place my drill blank back into the surveyor. So here again we take the tip of the drill blank and position it right in the depression we made, stabilize the surveyor table and lift the analyzing rod straight up in the air. Squirt some triad gel in the area, lower the drill blank back down and place some more triad gel on the outside of it. Take the curing light so here again we just loosen the knurled nut, lift the vertical spindle straight up in the air, take my x-ray guide off the cast, grasp it with my pliers, first twist and then lift my drill blank out. Now at this point in time what I want to do is to come in and do just a little bit of trimming on this triad gel to make it a little more even and take away any irregular edges. So what we will now do is place these dowels into their respective orientations in our x-ray guides. And by convention I try to make the dowels just even with the tissue surface. Now in this instance you can see that the dowels stick up in the air a little bit taller. It's very easy to take a little bit more of the triad gel and just flow over the top of these dowels, these blanks. Then we come on in with our curing light. It polymerizes our triad so that these will not shift when we take our radiograph. So again we'd want to see root of adjacent tooth floor of the sinus cavity, and then these two blanks would show up as two radiopaque silhouettes. 
So that completes the fabrication of the radiographic guide or the x-ray guide. So now we will proceed with making our actual surgery. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.